Hello everybody, GL1 here. Welcome to my online toy museum. And today I'm going to show you something a bit different. Uh, this is a, an art radio controlled vehicle uh, by Mold King. See the box over there. All right, and e though I bought this over a year ago, it is finally put together. And uh, I started to put it together a while ago and saw that it's going to be very time consuming. And normally I love building things, but I just didn't have the patience for it. So I finagled a friend of mine uh, to put it together. And uh, then I had to fix several things on it because he didn't put it together right and he couldn't get it working. But I've done that. So what this is, this is uh, an awesome concept. Uh, years ago, Radio Shack uh, had a radio control vehicle that had treads on all four wheels, was four-wheel drive, had an independent spring suspension just like this. It was about $150, and at the time I thought that was too much. Uh, it really wasn't. I should have bought it. Uh, you, could you could have changed the treads to tires, so it would do that as well. But this one's neat. Now, I've waited a long time, and this one you constructed. I had to construct. I've waited a long time to have something like this again. This is uh, two steering mechanisms. It's four-wheel steering, four-wheel drive, treads on every wheel, and radio controlled. So quite a bit to it. Um, the final product, when fully put together, I'll show you here on the package, looks like this. And, you know, it has a roof and everything, and um, it is not going to burn up. <laughs> it's not going to be throwing and jumping and throwing a lot of dirt around like that. Uh, but nonetheless, it's quite neat. And I don't, the roof I took off because I had to do a lot of, uh, you know, searching to find what wasn't right and what could I could improve. Um, and I probably won't put the stickers on it. I think I like it just like this. And uh, I may not put the roof on it either because that gives us better access to this vehicle. So what does this do? Or rather, I should say, how does it do what it does? So, all right. Here you have your module for your receiver module. And it is also the voltage regulator to control the motors. And it has um, two motors for each transmission. So what you have is you have a motor right here. That's one motor. And then you have another motor right over there. And you can see it's got the spring suspension. All right. Um, and it has pretty sophisticated transmission. It has um, a, a differential suspension in here and i'm gonna i have to be careful with this because it it actually kind of falls apart easily uh the treads do but if we look underneath here okay so let me show you here so right here this is our steering motor and that turns two shafts that steer it actually has two st steering gear mechanisms here and then if we look here, this is our differential. And I'm going to turn it on. And hopefully, I haven't played with it upside down. But that is the best way to see how it moves. So to turn it on, you push a button here. This is 2.4 gigahertz. So no need for a long antenna. And then you just turn your remote on there. And they sync up. And actually, let me show you this move a little bit. And then we can take a look and see how all that happens. So, all right. So there it is. And to steer it. Ah, this is the steering. There, you steer it like that. So I push this button D. And that pulls the motor one way. And you can see that the they turn in such a way that it will cut a sharper turn. The steer into each other. And then... This is our reverse and forwards. Now, the way my friend had put it together is he was following the instructions, and the instructions indicated that you see these here? You probably, if you've put together any kind of Lego Mindstorm type of motor things, or even on Timu they sell these things, these come apart. Ah, well, all right, I don't want to 
force them too much. These, yeah, they're, they're coming. They're all right. They come apart. All right. And you can have each one of these in a separate spot. So what they have is there's a little bit of an electrical connection here. And you can put this one here. And the way they had it wired is you would have this one here. But the problem with that is that would accelerate our forward wheels separate from our, re our rear wheels, which is dumb. So, oh, and looks like something has, all right, there, okay. It, you know, because the differential, it, 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 once it senses that uh, there's no resist, that there's too much resistance on one wheel, it stops the other. All right, well, I changed that by taking this off and then stacking it on top. So it's just using the voltage from one space to move both forwards and backwards, okay? Now, if we take this and look underneath, all right, you can see all the gears. And I'm going to show you a little bit about what my friend did incorrectly so that if you get something like this, you can keep an eye out for not making that mistake. But also, it's just kind of neat to know. All right, so this is the differential. So see how that spins? So I know I've given STEM classes uh, quite a long time ago on differential gears. So you have a gear that spins this, all right? There's a motor up on top that spins this, and then this spins around, and it moves these gears, and but they are not directly connected to each other. So they are independent. So if you move this one one direction, the other wheel turns in the opposite direction. But if it's centralized, it spins them both in the same direction, the central gear. And if you stop one, let's say I put my heel of my hand on here, the other side will spin and this will disengage. And that's how a real car works. And the reason for that is so when it goes around a turn, the wheel that's inside is going slower than the wheel on the outside. So it actually, this gearing system will mechanically slow down that wheel and allow the other wheel to go faster so it doesn't wear that tire out, or in this case, plastic tread. And so here's our steering, so you can see that underneath. So that motor is turning this shaft, which is connected to these two ball joints. And that's how we get our four wheel steering. There's a separate steering gears here and up here. See that? So I I've showed you quite a long time ago uh, Clodbuster. If you look in my STEM RC STEM classes or RC, you can see I did a show with Clodbuster, big giant RC car. It also had four wheel steering. Um, but this has an electronic speed control. That actually had a, what's called a mechanical speed control, which uses a resistor. So, all right, so this is the Mole King. All right, now. Oh, oh there we go. Okay. All right. It's not fast, as you can see. It's quite slow. And, all right, we can. And this, actually, this is uh, part of the roof. I, uh, oh, no, actually, it's part of the frame. All right, put that on there. All right. So here is what they accidentally, some mistakes that they made, things you can look out for. When you're putting this together, all right, you have these gears down in here. Uh, let's see. I'll show you. Ah, okay. Yep, so right, right in here, all right. And there's a, like a double gear. Okay, this is a better illustration. So see this? Okay, so you have, this is the differential. Okay, you have your motor actually turns this, which turns that, which then goes down, turns the differential, turns this gear, which turns this little black one. Okay, and uh, then, actually, I'm sorry, the black one turns that, and then that goes out to your wheel, okay, to your wheel hub. All right, well, what happened is, this piece here, all right, you know, sometimes you'll have pieces that are going in one direction and then these shift directions, all right? And what happened, this piece, 
is the one that shifts directions. It's got one open um, piece and like an opening that allows things to spin. And then on the other side, it has like a, a four-way stop. All right, if you put that on backwards, which is possible, you see you have a shaft that comes here to this black gear and it's got, you know, your, here's an example of a shaft. All right, so you could see it's, it's like a Phillips head. All right, so it will spin inside something that's open, right? So you could, if it, you know, like it'll spin inside something that's open like that. But if you put it inside something that's closed, all right, like this, and if this didn't move, then this wouldn't be able to move. So this piece here does both. It has one side that's open and one side that's closed. And it's, it's possible to reverse that. Well, my friend reversed it twice. He reversed it on the front. Uh, so one tread would turn and then the other side would not. And on the back, uh, he did the opposite. It, one side would turn, one side wouldn't. But even more exciting uh, than that mistake was that actually um, he pawned off the rear suspension to a friend of his to put together. And not only did that friend make the same mistake with that, but they also didn't even put in this gear that turns uh, the tread. So I had to go through and figure all that out. Yeah, it, it's one of those adages where is if you want something done right, you do it yourself. So, hey, you know, I can't really complain. And I'm really grateful, actually, because I didn't really want to put this together. And now it is together. And it really didn't take me, you know, maybe an hour or so to figure out what was wrong. And now I have this awesome, uh, though slow, radio-controlled, um, you know, a snow cat kind of vehicle. Now I'm going to show you this on the ground and show you what it uh, can and can't do. All right, so we're going to move ahead with it and go backwards. So the wheels don't always uh, line up perfectly, but it generally goes pretty straight. Now it's going to go up over this little bump here. So it it has a fair amount of torque, but um, not a lot, and it's slow. Now can it do it backwards? No. Now let's see if it can do it forwards. All right, so we're going to try to go up it this way. And it's slippery, so it, it can't quite do it. So let's take this outside and see what it can do. All right, so we're going to take it over some rocky terrain. As you can see, one of the treads is kind of like got disembobulated, discombobulated here. Uh, all right, let's try that again. So you see, not very good at that. Let's try it on mulch. I think, let's see if we can turn it. Well, it will turn. Okay. All right, so my conclusion on this fantastic beast of a machine is that it's really just a matter of enjoying the feat of engineering that it is. It is not really an off-road vehicle. Um, it does work, uh, so it does function at least, but it's, it's not really very playable. It's something of a novelty and an education in learning about 
suspensions, independent suspension, four wheel steering, treads, tracks, creating, you know, really like tank treads and how all that goes together. You got to make the trucks and everything, you know, the wheels and how all those rotate. And they're very delicate. They kind of fall apart easily. Um, I would, uh, I have already thought about ways how to strengthen this. So it won't be as maybe as pretty, but you could put some shafts that go all the way through here with some stronger ends on it to hold these together because these bottom trucks here, they fall apart. Also, you can take this off and you could put tires on it. So that, I do have some big Lego wheels. And so um, I'm going to be experimenting with that. And when I do, I'll show you uh, how that turns out. It also does come with some seats that you can put in there. Uh, but, you know, I'm, not, I'm just going to uh, leave it open like this. I, I kind of like it like that. And then it's easier to get to that on-off button. It's rechargeable. So you can, if you charge this up here, this is where your, um, you know, also your batteries for your motors are. Uh, so it's just a US, uh, yeah, USB charger, five and a half volts there. And then this just takes uh, some triple A's. So, all right. Well, um, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, it certainly was uh, great having my friend build it for me, but uh, I, I did enjoy, uh, you know, figuring it out and fixing it and getting it working and then understanding. And honestly, if it wasn't for my experience, uh, taking apart a lot of uh, radio-controlled vehicles and understanding a lot of what's going on with the gears, it would have been a lot more difficult isolating where the problem was, but... Um, I could tell that the differential gears, where it seemed like that might be the problem, was operating properly, so I knew that I had to look somewhere else, uh, and so it wasn't that bad finding that. So it really does help uh, to, you know, take things apart, study them, figure them out, and then in the future you can figure out other things. All right, well, I will be seeing you soon with some other exciting toys. Take care.